What's up, college football fans? Don't forget to check out and order your copy of Stiff Arming Football Myths, our latest football game plan book. So go on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copy. We have these available in paperback as well as in PDF form. Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bringing you another edition of Get Coached Up, where today I'm on the campus at Shippensburg University, one of the powers in the PSAC in Division II, to get coached up by offensive coordinator J.C. Morgan. So let's go inside the field house to see what he can coach me up on today. So I'm sitting here with Coach J.C. Morgan of Shippensburg. Coach, what am I getting coached up on today? Uh, we're we're going to get coached up on uh, a run scheme that's been very successful to us, our, our pin and pull scheme that allows the ball to get on the edge and and uh, we have a lot of different ways of doing that so we'll, we'll get started with that. We'll get started with that and are we going to learn because you know as a running back I got to ask these questions first so are, are we going to do any pass protection? Oh, we can talk to pass protection. I think that's something that's extremely <laughs> important so we got it. We have we have to get a pass pro in and, and uh, we have to get that going. Dang. All right, well, let's get coached. Right, man. <laughs> we, we've done a great job um, over the last couple of years of getting the ball on the edge. And, and you know, as much as, as we like to do the stretch scheme, uh, this this uh, pin and pull scheme has really been been good for us and it allows us to take advantage of angles. And it allows us to, to get the ball into our backs in space and have them make decisions. and. And you know if they can get a one-on-one -on -one matchup and make somebody miss, um, you know it, get, it gives us a great chance to pop a big play. So it's our pin and pull scheme that we we like to run, and we do it a lot of different ways. We can do a lot of different variations uh, out of the backfield and with with different uh, players other than the running back. So. Um, you know, it, when you talk about the scheme itself and the blocking of that scheme, it, it, it all begins with our tight end. Um, he has to do a great job of setting the edge. So we want him to set the edge right there and seal that defensive end inside. If that defensive end is in an inside uh, technique, we, we expect to win that battle. Mm -hmm. However, if he's head up or if, you, if he's even slightly outside as we get that look sometimes, we call it a no-lose block. And meaning that we're going to try to seal that guy inside. We want to seal him in. But if that defensive end is hell-bent on keeping contained and he wants to fly outside, the tight end has to have the ability to recognize that. And then if, that's, if he's not going to get contained, then he's just going to push that guy to the sideline. So it's a, he can't lose. That's right. why we call it a no-lose block. So let's assume that he's head up and we do a good job sealing him inside. That sets the table. The, the, the next aspect of this scheme, you're looking at the center, or I'm sorry, you're looking at the guard and the play side tackle, okay? The front side guard and the front side tackle. And what they have to realize is one of those two guys will pull, mm -hmm. okay? And the defender that, or the, the lineman that has a defender and is inside will be the one that blocks down on that lineman. If you do not have a defender on your inside, you're gonna pull. So in this case right here, we have a three technique He's in the inside shoulder of the, the tackle. Mm -hmm. He's going to block down. He does not have an inside defender. and He does not have a defender inside of him. He's going to pull. Now, in this look here, he's going to pull to contain okay. you know, whoever shows up in the alley. Okay. Now, on the edge here, the basic, the basic scheme that we run here, he has most, most dangerous. So, he's either going to block the corner. If that safety backs up, or if that safety charges down that corner backs up, he's going to come down and crack that safety. Mm -hmm. All things even, let's block the safety, make the corner make the tackle. Right. In theory, you know, a lot you of times where the corner is the weakest of the tacklers, but you know, we have to play that by game plan and personnel. The second puller for us will be the center. Okay, he's going to pull, and what he's going to look for is first and foremost any run through any linebacker that runs through he's going to look to block that and take care of the run through if he gets around the edge he's going to look to seal in the linebacker okay and again it's the ability of the first puller to read the block on the, the defensive end from the tight end and it's really the responsibility of the center if he's not blocking run through 
to read the block from the, the guard or whoever the first puller may be. On the back side, it's pretty simple. If you have a defender on your inside gap, you're gonna cut them down. Mm -hmm. If not, you're gonna go for the first backer inside. And you know, we ideally would like to get him cut down. Now, in this case, if you're the backside tackle, you don't have it inside, deep D tackle in your in your inside, you're gonna look for the mic, because he's the next backer that's inside. But what we tell this tackle is he wants to aim for the sand. Knowing he's not gonna get there, but if worst case scenario is that linebacker takes a hard flat path and we're going for that angle of the sand that we have a that gives us the best chance to get to that Mike linebacker. So they're going to take care of the backside, and we're going to let this guy, you know, we're going to let him go. Now, when you say run through, you're talking about, let's see, on the front side, Sam comes through, that's the center's guy. Correct. Okay. He's responsible for that run through. Okay. And you're reading, you're reading backside. Well, we, we do have some variations off of that, but okay. we will get some backside reads. But first, I mean, right, the, the way our base scheme is run, this is a give to the back who's going to come across. And this takes me back to my wing T days a little mm -hmm. bit, where we used to run the buck sweep. We want to get our eyes first on the end man of line of scrimmage, and we want to see where that block is going. So we're going to keep a nice flat path. We're going to get our eyes to that. If we got him hooked, we're going to be prepared to get around that. But if we start to realize that that end's going to keep contained, then we got to be willing to attack that area while, while keeping a flat path, stick that outside foot in the ground, which would be the right foot in this case, and get up the field at a 90 degree cut. We can also do this out of two backs, and we go back to now 21 personnel, and this changes some things up for us a little bit here because we do have uh, a lead back who can block the alley. Mm -hmm. The blocking scheme does not change up front. You know, we're still going to try to reach and, and, and seal that guy in. They still have to know who's pulling and not pulling. Mm -hmm. However, with this back here, we can identify that there's going to be some sort of lead, okay? For the, for the receiver, when he knows that there's a, some, uh, some form of lead, he doesn't have to be worried about this safety if he crashes down. He can just man up on the corner because now this back is coming, the lead back. He's going to come around and block whoever's, whoever's in the alley area. Sometimes this safety still might be on the drop and that Sam flies over the top. But if he's there and he shows up in the alley, that's the responsibility of the lead back. And you know we're doing the same stuff here with the with the backfield action. Quarterback's just going to catch it, hand off to the the dive back, and then a lot of times we'll do something with him backside, either carry out a boot or actually fake a zone read run. So so let's say you have the lead back, and also now this guy is going to pull. If the Sam comes first, it's his duty to pick him up first. If the Sam if he beats him to the. He should, which he should, right? Correct. If the Sam comes outside, we don't give him any inside responsibility. Okay. So if the Sam comes outside and he shows up in the alley and he's more dangerous than that safety, we, we expect the lead back to take care of him. Okay. Okay? And, and that's pretty much how we would incorporate uh, this scheme with a lead back. I, I think another component of this is, is that we want to get all of our all of our athletes involved in the run game mm -hmm. and sometimes that may involve getting a receiver involved in that so we can show the one back look here okay and we're still we, we, we're in 11 personnel here but now we can motion the receiver from the backside into the backfield and have him be involved as the ball carrier and now this the single back has become the lead block so now we have the lead block he knows it's lead yeah, he's going to block the corner, he's going to block whoever's in the alley, and then generally you, you can have an extra man here, but you'll still get first puller, second puller. All right, and that's just a way, if you have a receiver who's you know dangerous with the ball and you want to find a way to get the ball in his hands, let's go ahead and, 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 and do that. So it's like a Rocket Ishmael type player, right? Yeah, I, I, old school yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. I, you know, I would say any, anybody, you know, you know, we've had, we've been lucky to have some uh, some young men in our program who, you know, whether they're a receiver or running back, we get the ball in their hands. You know, something special could happen. Mm -hmm. You know, let's 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 take advantage of the scheme and and put the ball in those guys' hand and let them go to work. So sometimes we can we can employ this pin and pull scheme, but also have some read stuff involved with it. So, um, you know, we can make a call that will allow the quarterback to read the linebacker backside. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because if defenses want to be aggressive um, with their linebacker flow to the action, then obviously we want to try to take advantage of that. 
So if we have a backside read here, and we're gonna take this Mike uh, backer, for example, we're gonna read him. So the quarterback, as he gets the snap, and as he, um, as he's approach, as the running back is approaching him, his eyes is on that backside linebacker. If he fast flows with the with the run action there, then on the backside here, we're gonna we're gonna actually try to keep it and run it, and that changes the blocking scheme on the backside because where they were what we call supering on the backside, now they're gonna base block this on the backside. So when they when they hear a particular call that tells us that we're gonna read the backside backer, this becomes base blocking. So now he's going to block down on that nose, the, the backside guard will, and the backside tackle will now base block that defensive end. So if that linebacker takes off, the quarterback will keep the ball and insert himself into the free gap. Now, how often do you, you, you know, a lot of times you see people don't want to trust, you know, quarterbacks running downhill, but that that's obviously based off your personnel that you we feel confident this guy can get down here and protect himself. Absolutely. I mean, you know, you don't want your quarterback taking shots all mm -hmm. day. And you know, that comes with teaching him how to slide and know when to fold it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> know when to fold it and, and you know, protect himself. I think that's very that's a key. But, you know, as we always say here at Shippensburg, we want to be able to use all eleven men in the run game. And if our quarterback has the ability to run, we've, you know, it's not about being a 4-4 guy or if it just has to be smart enough and, and be able to read what the defense is doing, take the free yards, and, you know, we'll move on to the next play. But it's all about moving the ball forward. And it's all about, uh, you know, making it an 11-on-11 11 11 game. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Make them have to defend for one extra person. Off of that, we can employ the same scheme And I'm going to take the backside read off of this here. So I'm going to go back to our, you know, the, the original scheme here. But we can actually make the quarterback the focal point of this play here. So now we have the lead back. He's coming here. But now the quarterback's just going to take the snap. And he's just going to take the place of the ball carrier. So it's just mm -hmm. taking the snap, following the lead of the back. We got first puller, second puller. And if this guy can carry the ball and, and give you something in the run game, we're going to take advantage of that. And it just depends on who our guys are and, and what the defenses are trying to do to, to take it away. Now you start to see a lot of uh, people think, you know, everything is brand new, let's say, in, in football. But I think you know where I'm going with this. Like You start to see a lot of wing tee principles and um, option football principles, single wing principles mm -hmm. in many different forms of offense. You know, as far as like that play was just concerned, uh, taking someone and you know making him the ball carrier out mm -hmm. instead of like you know going through the single wing football as <laughs> right. you know and, and you know I know at certain you know with certain programs you know they want the ball in in the hands of their best players. Mm -hmm. um, we we like to have the ball in the hands of multiple players and have multiple threats on any given play. And I think one thing that we do that will even take advantage of that is to have the ability to have the run pass option. Okay. You know, and being able to say, okay, it's not just about the run, but we're going to have a certain call where, hey, we have a run play drawn up and the scheme will be run play. But if the defense does this, we're going to throw the ball. And, you know, we like to throw the bubble as much as anybody <laughs> in the country. So here we're going to have, you know, the same blocking scheme. We got our pullers all lined up. We don't tell our line anything different. The, the, the great part about this is that our line's blocking the scheme, and that's all they need to know. But here, we're gonna come through, and we might say, okay, look, let's read the backside backer. Let's base block on the backside, okay? Just say he takes off, and what teams will do is they'll say, okay, take off, and then you come in and you fill the B gap. Now, we'll have the bubble on the backside here. So now we're gonna read this, and, and when this play is really cooking, we might read read this, decide to pull it because of this Mike Backer. Keep it like you're going to run, because now you see the hard flow inside, and then you just flip that thing out to the receiver, and now you have a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and you know you want to go to work off of that. And that's that's how you dictate. This this is awesome because again, now you've taken what they thought was a counter move and made it a weakness. We want to counter their counter, <laughs> and, that, and that's what we want to do. And again. You know, we're getting the, the 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 ball in the hands of our playmakers, and we're operating at a very fast tempo. So it's not like you know defenses have the ability, or you know we want to take away their ability to kind of think things through. They got to make these plays on the fly, and if 
some good defenses can do it, but if defenses can't, we'll make them pay. You know this is the, the, the worst part of every running backs. You know, you, you know this is what we don't like. This this is what keeps me in the meeting rooms at late at night during camp with these guys. And you know, when you get into a an hour and a half or two hour film session after a long day's practice during mm -hmm. preseason camp and we talk about pass protect and I'm showing them videos and going through diagrams and schemes and stuff, it really uh, <laughs> that that's what I, I think they wish they were back at right. home. But but it's a, it's something that's necessary if they wanna wanna uh, be great at it. So you know, I'll talk to talk through our base okay. uh, pass protection, and then you know we can even talk about some of the things that our running backs must keep in mind when they're when they're pass protected. But in terms of our pass our pass protection, we have um, what many would know as a Jets uh, protection. There, it's basically a half man with a half slide. So half the half the side's going to do um, the man be man on man, and then mm -hmm. the other half from the center on back will be will be the back side. Okay. So with us, you know, just say. If the star represents the man side protection here, that means the, the front side guard and the front side tackle are going to be man on with the offensive line. So the guard's going to be, he's going to get the first man on the line of scrimmage, and the tackle will have the second man on the line of scrimmage, in this case, the defensive end. You know, we're, we're assuming the tight end is going to release here. Mm -hmm. The center, backside guard, and backside tackle represent the backside, and they're going to be on what we call the slide side, okay? So the tackle's gonna have contain, guard's gonna have the B gap, and the tackle's gonna have the backside A gap, okay? The running back here is gonna be responsible for any blitz on the man side. Okay. Okay, so if this might comes, okay, that's the responsibility of the, the running back. Say the, no, Mike drops, the Sam comes, whatever way they form up mm -hmm. front, that be the responsibility of the running back. But what we tell the running back is that protection starts from the inside out. So that's the first principle that he, he must know. If, if you don't understand anything else, <laughs> protection starts from the inside out. So if the Mike and Sam both come, the Mike is the inside of the two, he's the priority, mm -hmm. okay? The other thing that we will do is we will put our our Mike, our, I'm sorry, our running back on what we call a gap exchange alert. Okay. And that involves, you know, taking this a little bit further and, and involving the center. What we tell the center on our slide side is that he's going to lock on to, to the nose, okay? Even if the nose comes across the man side, the center will carry that, okay, uh, to the man side. He, okay. He's locked on to him. Now, if that happens, we put our back on alert for the backside A gap because now if they do any kind of switch, mm -hmm. you know, that leaves it free. So for, for that to happen, we need the back to come through and help out there. So that's just understanding how defenses will blitz us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through that, knowing how they attack, here's our answer for that, okay? Another thing that we will do, and this is, and this is very important to our scheme, is we will move our backs around, okay? Because we don't want teams to pick up which side is the man's side or which side is the zone side. If we lined up here all the time and defenses knew that this was the man side, mm -hmm. they would have all these different kind of blitzes that really attack us, attack us. So what we can do is we can still make this the man side. Okay. But we can line the back up here and then just bring him across the, the ball here, okay, bring him across the formation and establish him on the on the uh, the man side, even from the zone side there. And that hopefully will, will keep defenses honest. And it's not necessarily like one of those drastic changes you see where he's responsible for like the, the C gap where he has to fly across the formation. Right. It's, 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 still, it's still inside out protection. So he's just coming across and you know, if, if there's a blitz on the inside A gap there to the man side, he, he's got to step up and, and make that protection work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so that's the scheme. That's our base scheme, and we have a lot of variations off of it. But that's you know, coming in, our, our guys must learn that first and foremost. Okay, in terms of actually making the block happen, you know, I think we have a couple principles that we like the the um, like the backs to keep in mind. First and foremost is that the contact must happen as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. We we use the term win the spot. Mm -hmm. You want to win the spot here. So it's not in terms of protection. If you step up and just say this Mike linebacker is blitzing. It's not take two steps and wait for him. Mm -hmm. now, we want the contact to happen as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. And really, we want to be aggressive to that to that spot there, okay? So we want to make sure we, we're inside out, 
Okay, we establish it, you know, we're inside out, we have our inside foot in front, we're meeting him as close to the line of scrimmage as possible. And the main thing off of that is we use that we say you gotta stop his charge. Mm -hmm. So we are in a nice position, we got our, you know, we got our butt down, we got our knees bent, we got our hands tight, elbows tight, and we wanna come through, and if we're waiting for that guy, we wanna stand and punch, you know, just as aggressive as a lineman would on a on a hard charge and D-tack or defensive end. We wanna stop his charge. And I think the main thing off of that is just they understanding that once you stop his charge, now you're kind of in a reactionary position because you have to do what you can to be in front of that guy. You know, it, it, you know, we, we say you have to fight like hell. Right. Can I say hell? Yeah, you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to fight, we want to fight like hell. And, and you got to make sure for those three or four seconds that you are really going after that guy and keep, and keeping him in front. At the end of the day, you're going to go against a guy if you're giving up 60 or 70 pounds to. Mm -hmm. So be it. You know, we expect you to fight and maintain position. And if you can do that, you're going to be successful in our now, offense as a protector. That's where the physics come in. Because I'm glad you brought it up about meeting him at the spot. Because I think that's where a lot of banks get in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's in the weight. Well, now you have physics, physics going against you. Mm -hmm. You got this guy that outweighs you by 60 or 70 pounds. Mm -hmm also running and you're standing at a standstill, you're dead in the water. Right. But meeting him right here, like you said, that kind of neutralizes the, the weight force type situation. Absolutely, and and really, from point A to point B, if, if you meet at the same time, it's, it's almost like an iso block, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's what we talk about. You have to have that ability to be able to have a, a hard impact, but then get out of that to become reactionary so that you can mirror that guy and, and keep a base and also know, you know, hey, I, I got to be between me and the quarterback. So, Coach, I appreciate you taking time. Thanks a lot, up. man. Hope I coached you up there. Yeah, you did. Hey, yes, you made me feel better about the pass protection department, meeting you, meeting the linebacker at the spot. Because, again, my biggest fear as a, as a back was, man, I didn't want to get run over. So, I used to try to either cut or try to pick a side of a player that's coming in right. and blitzing and then wash him to whichever right. side. But meeting him at the spot makes so much sense. Absolutely. And, and don't get me wrong, we do, because we have the ability to cut, we will cut at the line of scrimmage. Uh, we always talk about, you know, if you're if you're a pitcher, you don't want to just throw fastballs because at some point they'll tee off. You know, you want to throw that curveball, that all speed pitch every mm -hmm. once in a while, and and you know that you know that cut block can be your little change up. Right. <laughs> you know, you need to have that to get get in the linebackers' minds that hey, you know, if I'm a fly at 100 miles an hour, they got something else for me. You're gonna be doing somersaults. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Feet in the air is a beautiful thing sometimes. <laughs>